In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, I'd like to share some tips on using a 3D title tool inside the title room. We often think of titles mainly in two dimensions, but there is a tool that will allow you some 3D titling in your projects. I'd like to have you look at the following short clip, and then we'll show you a bit about the features of the 3D titling component. We're not going to use this background to make it easy to see what we're up to. So I'm going to click down on the arrow, go in my color boards, and I'll drop a blue color board onto track number one. And then we'll go to our title room. I'll click on the T or I can press the F7 function key. And I'm going to take the one that says default 3D, drag that down to a higher number track, track number two. And now what I'd like to do is show you a bit about what it can do. Immediately you see it is a 3D title. Let's look at how we can use it. I can press the F2 key to get into the title designer, or I can double click on my title track. Now I'm in the title designer. Let me show you some of the features of the 3D titler. You notice you have some of the same controls you have on the left side for other titles. This would be familiar. For example, if I want to change the font, I can click the down arrow and choose from the selections, or I could just start typing the name of the font. Let's say I go to Impact, and it will change it like that. You notice when you get into the edit mode, I just clicked inside the box. It turns to 2D so you can see how your edit's going. That's a nice feature. I'm going to change this to Visit Miami. And then when I click away from it, again, I see the three dimensions. Let me show you a little bit about some of the unusual things you have in the 3D Titler. You have an object here called Font Face. If I click on the right arrow, it will give me something I don't see elsewhere, which is extrusion. That is the depth of the letter. Now I can take my slider and move it when I click on the title and move that. You may see a little bit of movement in the edit window, but not a lot. Let me show you a trick I found that makes it really easy to see your extrusion values. I'm going to click on the arrow pointing to 3D rotational settings. And here you have your X, Y, and Z coordinates. If I take my Z coordinate and move it left or right, you see I can either go clockwise or counterclockwise. I'll reset that to zero simply by typing the number in. The interesting one for 3D is the Y rotation. Now when I see, turn this around like this, I can begin to see the depth of my letters, my extrusion value. I like, I like doing this just to check them out. Now I'm going to drag up again to my extrusion values. I can go all the way from 0, which is flat, all the way to 100. Now you noticed only one of them is moving. Well, why is that? Well, let's click, let's click back on the title. And you notice I only have the visit selected. If I want everything selected, I drag across all the letters. And I can make my extrusion identical for all of them. So we'll go back to our Y rotation view. And now we have them all extruded the same way. Now, if you want some deeper than another, that's a very easy way to choose between all of them or some of them. But this gives you the extrusion value. And if I actually turn it to about 90 degrees, I can see pretty clearly exactly how far back it goes, how deep they are uh, for my particular use. And of course, we can also work on the X rotation and the Y and the Z as much as we want to see the effect of the extruded letters uh, any way we so choose. But that gives you an interesting way to measure what you're doing when you're trying to extrude the letters. The other thing that we have here that's a unique feature is an item called 3D Settings. I just click back on here. When I click on 3D Settings, it looks like nothing happens. Let's take the arrow, right arrow, and click on it. And here we have the option of making this slightly larger or smaller 
it changes the 3D depth, with it, which in essence changes the size of it just a little bit. So you can do this without changing the font size. Another interesting feature of this is that you can use 3D textures. I'm going to click on the right arrow by the texture, and that will give me options I have for what they call skins. Now when I click on a skin, it will apply that skin to my text. I can do a gold, I can do a bronze, I can do a wood or a brick look. I click over here, I can do a more metallic. These are the presets I have in terms of skins. Now one thing you have to be careful of is when you're adjusting the font color, it will also override some of the skin transition. Right now we're white. Let's try a green. Click on OK. And now it's combining the two in that particular word. So if I, if I wanted to have the actual color and look of the skin, I need to have my color not green or anything else. I need to turn it back to white. And then the skin will look normal. Uh, again, once you open the font face controls, you have another color. These two are identical. If I change this to blue, for example, it's blue up here. So these are the same controls, basically in two different places. So if you're going to apply a skin and you want it to look like one of the presets, uh, you have to make sure your color is white for your font face. If you want to take off the skin, all you do is click on the X and it will remove it. And you see you can color different words or different letters differently using this tool. Another feature you have that's nice is you have effects. I'll click on the Effect tab at the top. And we have what we're used to in PowerDirector, which is a starting effect and an ending effect. Now you notice all of these say 3D. So these are a subset of all the effects that you have that only apply in this particular situation. So if I want a spin horizontal in my starting effect, I simply click on it. And it impacts all of the text in that title. And then let's go to an ending effect. We'll click here. We have the same selection that we had before. And we'll just do a slide in. And there's my ending effect. Again, if you want to hover over the blue area on the left, it will give you the starting effect. The blue area on the right will give you the ending effect. And you can remove either one simply by clicking on the X as normal. You change the duration by moving the slider. The shorter it is, the faster it runs. The longer it is, the more prolonged it will show up on your screen. And so this is a bit about how you can begin to use this when you want to try a 3D look in your project in CyberLink PowerDirector.